Please bow your heads in prayer with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. Can't. Don't. Won't. All these are words with immediate negative connotations attached to them. Just think about how we use them in life. I can't believe what they did. They just don't do what I tell them. Why won't they just listen? That's just with my kids. But in all three cases there, we see the negative keeps coming to the surface. And in life, we tend to focus on the negatives, don't we? We focus on the things that go wrong in life. Those awful events surrounding us, that's what we talk about. When we hear bad news or hear of criticism of us, it overtakes us. It overtakes our minds even to the point that's where and all that we tend to focus in on is the negative. Can't, don't, and won't. There's been numerous studies and a plethora of research of how one must overcome those negative thoughts with positive comments and how many positive comments it actually takes to overcome one negative. There is no secret number, even, the, even out there in the research, it doesn't all agree. But it does take more positive than negative to overcome the negative. But maybe there is another way of seeing this with all the negativity in our world today. The idea I'm suggesting is that we take a page right out of Moses' book. No, literally. Especially the book of Numbers. Now I know what you might be thinking. Numbers? There's going to be a sermon on the book of Numbers? Pastor, didn't you hear the title that you just said? Numbers. That means like all there is in that book is Numbers. What can we learn about a census of the people? What can we learn about that? It seems like it's so dull and so boring. Come on now. Numbers? We can learn a lot. We can learn a lot about the census that took place and the duties that were assigned to a rebellious nation. In fact, we find out we have more in common with the children of Israel than what we think, especially what's going on there in the book of Numbers. We go to Numbers 11. Go to Numbers 11. Immediately before the reading assigned in our lectionary for this day, we go to Numbers 11, verses 1 through 3. See, immediately before the reading assigned for the day, we read and we hear how the people there of Israel complained about their misfortunes. They complained and complained. They complained about their food. They complained over their leadership. They complained even about the Lord their God who had saved them time and time again. All they did was complain. Maybe we have more in common than what we realize. Complaint after complaint piled up. And time after time, the Lord God reminded His chosen children what they possessed. What He gave. Deliverance. We come to the first verse of our reading for today, verse 4. We hear that the rabble had a strong craving. How many of you have used that word in a conversation lately? The rabble. The rabble. It's a unique word used in Scripture, and particularly a unique word within the Hebrew context and language that is being used here in Scripture. The rabble. This is most likely describing those who were, for a lack of a better term, the tagalongs, the ones who kind of like to stir the pot, the ones who like to poke the bear. This is the rabble. They were technically not Israelites. They left Egypt when the children of God departed from slavery, and they said, well, we must be free too. We'll just hop on for the ride. The rabble had seen and believed in the Lord God. They saw his power. They saw his majesty and his might. Because of the miracles and signs that they had seen, they knew who the Lord God was. And yet, 
the rabble complained. The rabble liked to stir others to complain too. Sounds a great deal like us. Like we are the rabble. We constantly complain. We also infiltrate groups with a message of negativity because we want, as Sinatra declared, I want it my way. With such negativity spreading throughout the people, Moses then has to take his complaint directly to the Lord God. And he says, Lord, you've got to take action. Lord, you've got to do something about these people you gave me. What did you think? That I was going to take care of them? How am I going to take care of them? How am I going to provide meat for them? Lord, what are you going to, what kind of people have you given me? Lord, it'd just be better if you just end my life right now. I'm sick of dealing with this people. But now comes the interesting twist in the narrative of Numbers. Out of the 70 elders of Israel, Moses is called to take the leaders, these 70 chosen elders, to go to the, out to the tent of meeting where the Lord God would speak unto them. So there, out of the 70 elders, Moses takes them. He takes them, but really only 68 show up. For those of you counting at home, that's not perfect attendance. The 68 go. Because Eldad and Medad decide to stay back in camp and not to attend this meeting because they had had enough. It appears that they had enough of the leadership. They had enough of the whining. They had enough of the people. They just kind of wanted to blend in and just live out their lives. Eldad and Medad were done. But the Lord wasn't done with them. The Lord is not done with us. The Lord God came down to those 68 elders, gathered around the tent, and the Spirit of the Lord rested upon them right where they were, and they prophesied. They declared the wonders of the Lord. They declared how the Lord had sustained them and would continue to sustain His people then, now, and forever. They prophesied that deliverance that the Lord had and would provide in this life and the life to come. It just so happened that that same spirit that was on those 68, that same prophecy that they declared was the same spirit and prophecy on Eldad and Medad. Even though they refused to go out to the tent of meeting, the spirit of the Lord rested upon Eldad and Medad. And Eldad and Medad, they couldn't be contained. They declared that prophecy just as the rest of the elders received and declared there at the tent of meeting. And Joshua heard about this. Joshua heard about this and he turns to Moses and he says, they shouldn't be doing that. Tell them to stop. They're not with the other elders. Tell them that they need to cease and desist. This is not right. This is not good. But Moses responds to his assistant, to to Joshua, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. In other words, Moses tells Joshua as he tells us, They can't stop. Don't let them stop. They won't stop. See, they can't stop declaring the wonders of God. They can't stop. They don't stop in showing God's mercy and grace is for all people. And they won't stop because the Spirit of the Lord is resting upon them. We see a similar scene as we fast forward and that unfolds in our gospel reading for today from Mark's gospel account. John comes in. He gives a report to Jesus. Jesus, there's someone out there casting out demons in your name. What are you going to do about it? What do you want us to do about it? See, he wanted action because to John, this person who was calling out and casting out demons in the name of Jesus Christ, he wasn't one of the chosen twelve. So he thought that because he wasn't one of the disciples that this person should have been stopped. And yet Jesus replies, He can't be stopped. 
Don't stop him if he is declaring my name. And he won't stop because he is giving all honor and glory and praise to me, to Christ who saves. For what should cease, though, our Lord and Savior goes on to say, what should cease is our sin. That sin which causes us to stray from God. Our sin which causes us to focus ourselves and not on the mercy and grace provided for us. What we should stop is leading others astray. Leading others astray from God or from receiving that mercy and grace which He richly and daily provides for us and all people. Jesus expounds upon this thought. He declares that it is of the utmost importance that we look after those in the early in faith. We look after those little ones. We make sure children know what sin is and who saved them from it. We make sure those new to the faith and those just receiving the faith, they are raised in the love of Christ. We see this take place yet today. We saw it take place moments earlier at the beginning of our worship service as Eliza Grace was given the Spirit. Eliza Grace now can't help but have the Spirit on her and in her. She doesn't want to stop and we shouldn't even try. There's don't and won't because the Spirit is rested upon her because there within that water and word our Lord and Savior gave her the Spirit. And the Spirit is rested upon her as the Spirit also rests on all of us. That's the Spirit. <laughs> because all of us, all of us as followers of Christ, all of us as brothers and sisters, we have been given the Spirit too. We have been given the Spirit where we can't stop we don't stop and we won't stop telling out that good news of Jesus, that good news that salvation is found in Christ and in Him alone. Earlier this month, I was reminded of such dedication and what that dedication looks like. I remember seeing the footage of all those emergency personnel from 9-11. All the firemen, the first responders, they were running towards the Twin Towers. They weren't running away. They ran knowing what they were about to face. They ran knowing they may not make it out alive. Yet, they stayed the course because those and other emergency personnel yet today, they serve us and they serve those in this world because they can't stop. They don't stop and they won't stop. And how much more, how much more did our Lord and Savior do the same for all those who have lost their lives. How much more does our Lord and Savior do that for all those who are living and all those who will have ever lived? He could not contain. He could not contain. Stop loving this world. This world that does not reciprocate that love towards Him. He did not stop. He did not stop as He died on the cross for you and for me and for everyone who will ever live. He did not stop for the rising from the grave after three days so that forgiveness and life may be given. Christ will not stop. He won't stop lavishing His love upon us, that grace that He so richly gives. See, Moses was right. Moses was right there in Numbers 11. Would all the Lord's people were prophets that the Lord would put His Spirit on them. And that prophecy has come true. For the Lord our God has given us the Holy Spirit. There at the font, the Spirit is given. There as you hear the Word, as you read it, you mark it, you inwardly digest it in your daily devotions, in your family devotions, in your family time, as you converse together and gather around the Word. There the Spirit is present. There the Spirit is at work. For the Lord God has put the Spirit in us all to declare that truth of God. Paul reminds young Timothy of this in 2 Timothy 1. For this very reason I remind you, fan into flame that gift of God. 
which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but it gives us power and love and self-discipline. See, we can't stop declaring how lavish the Lord has been on us. We don't stop in our efforts to tell all people in all places what great lengths our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went to in order to save us and all people. And we won't stop. We won't stop living that life of love. That life of love that Christ has called us to live. For our Lord and Savior has told us we are the ones who have the salt. That salt that gives us flavor to our lives, that salt that preserves us, that salt that has delivered us. But we have the salt that is Christ Jesus, our Lord. He is in and with us, just as the Spirit rests upon us, so that all may know, that all may know the wonderful news, that wonderful message of salvation is in Christ, now and forever. Amen. Now the peace that passes our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds as we continue to proclaim and declare the spirit and the love of Christ now and forever. Amen.